Good morning, and welcome to the John Thompson Tribute Concert. My name is Ian Dearden. I'm a long-time legal and musical colleague and friend of John's, and it's my privilege to be your MC and guide to this celebration of one of Australian folk music's brightest talents who left us far too soon. John died on the 4th of February, 2021, during the difficult second year of the pandemic, and this is just the second opportunity we've all had to celebrate the great man and his music. As you'd expect, no show about John would be complete without his voice. What you just heard as you took your seats was John, multi-tracked, singing a sailor's hymn, Never Weather Beaten Sail. He recorded it himself late at night in a stone on the island of Iona in Scotland, and it reveals the lifelong influence of his experience as a Catholic choir boy in St. Stephen's Cathedral, Brisbane, as well as his abiding love of harmony singing. We have a big story to tell in word and song and far too short a time to tell it. So strap yourselves in for 60 minutes of love, life, laughter and song with the cream of Australia's folk community and a few overseas ring-ins who were all not entirely coincidentally among John's nearest and dearest friends, collaborators, inspirations and musical compatriots. So let's start the show. When John and Nicole lived in Mullaney, the queue at the I IGA supermarket was a good place to hear a story or two. And after one particularly lively visit, John wrote this song about Bill Sinclair, the strongest man on the range, and his night at the circus in Landsborough. From the Cloud Street album, Circus of Desires, here are Chloe and Jason Roweth and a band of thousands with Bill and the Bear. Come listen now, good people here, to a story of renown, of the day a hundred years ago, when the circus came to town. Mr. Worth and all his gallant crew, they raised the big top high. All the folk from miles around gathered under a canvas sky. And were you there in the clear night air? William Sinclair, he fought the bear. Were you there to see William Sinclair? And he wrestled the bear to the ground. I have a crisp ten pounds for any 
muscle and the hair. With a mighty roar, Bill threw Samson down. He raised his fist in the air. And oh, were you there in the clear night air when William Sinclair he beat the bear? Were you there to see William Sinclair when he wrestled the bear to the ground? You never heard a roar quite like it. The shouts that the This morning you get to hear not one, not two, but three songs written for John. I'm going to make my way to the centre there in a couple of minutes as the crowd clears off this stage and I'm going to give you my tribute to my dear, dear friend, which I've imaginatively, imaginatively titled Song for John. You can find a recorded version on my Bandcamp page, just search my name or scan the QR code on the posters around the venue. All sales that go from this song are funding a memorial headstone for John's grave at Tuong, Brisbane. And of all of these plugs, which one's mine? <laughs> What a wonderful man. And Jason is just a little shorter than me. Thank you. Song for John. Are we getting any of that through? stealing all of my life away green man is calling no time for stalling I know that I cannot stay Waves keep on lapping, shorelines and napping. Time to be on my way. Music is playing, dear friends are praying. No reason now. So bid me a fond farewell. Sing me one long last goodbye. 
me a tear, but I leave with no fear. My work here will live on, my dear. Life is for singing I hear voices ringing Far off beyond that shore Time for the meeting With those who are greeting me In the So bid me a fond farewell Sing me one long last goodbye Shed me a tear But I leave with no fear My work here will live on Quick change of roles. <laughs> John was born in Brisbane and he wrote this song about its historically significant massive tidal river. He experienced its great flooding as a boy in 1974. The song was captured in the final Cloud Street album with the Little Cloud Orchestra, recorded live at the State Library in Brisbane, gazing out at the Brisbane River flowing past the venue. John loved researching and writing songs with a, an historical bent. He also loved Morris dancing. And whenever he was in town, he'd go to the, with the Morris side to Mount Kutha as they danced up the sun on May Day. John is buried at Tuong Cemetery, just down the mountain from Mount Kutha, and he asked that the Morris dancers stop by and dance beside his grave before heading home each year. Beltswagger will perform a dance choreographed specifically for this performance and will perform an honour guard as the song concluded. Nicole Murray and band and the Bell Swagger Morris with Brisbane River. Incidentally, I live not too far from where John uh, is buried and I drop by and say hello to him as well. I do too. <laughs> hello everyone. And please welcome Bell Swagger Morris, my own Morris side. Well, I don't own them, I'm one of them. <laughs>
A storm blew Finnegan and Parsons north to the banks of the Brisbane River. Mr. Thompson never made it ashore to the banks of the Brisbane River. From the Big hand for Belt Swagger and the band. John and I originally met when we both worked at the Legal Aid Office in Brisbane and discovered our shared love of folk music. Together with Marie Robertson, whom you've already heard singing with me this morning, we presented performances at various Mullaney folk festivals, at the that which was the predecessor festival, of course, to Woodford including songs of love and death and songs of war and peace. I left the legal aid office for private practice, but John stayed on. And by 1992, he was working as a legal aid lawyer in Townsville. He maintains that this next song is a true story, except for the last verse, and that the only name, sorry, that the name was only changed to protect Sean. He also claimed that it was an oversight that he had a brother called Kevin. It was, he asserted, a generic Kevin and not his brother Kevin, who was the song's eponymous protagonist. Here to present that slice of dubious legal sophistry, you're a good one for that, Fred, is Fred Smith and Nicole Murray. I'd like to dedicate this song to a brilliant comedy duo that once took this festival by storm for about 20 years, never the twain, John Thompson and Martin Pearson. I'll be John, you be Martin. Okay. <laughs> I said I'll be John, you be Martin. Okay. 
I've got enough hair. <laughs> it's a serious song, actually. My mate Kevin, he smokes dope. It's true, just as I stand here. He'll sit at home with his bucket bone while you go out for a beer. He grows his own, so he's self-sufficient. He's done all the numbers, you see. He's an ordinary fellow with an ordinary life, as nice as nice can be. Well, one day Kevin was sitting in his lounge room with his music, his stash and his gear. There was a knock on the front door, a bang on the back. It's the police open up in there. And they burst right into the lounge room, started pushing the ladder around. And from behind the couch, they pulled a plastic bag and said, what's this we have found? And Kevin said, they're not my drugs. I don't use drugs. I don't like drugs. I've never seen drugs. I wouldn't know drugs with more than they bugs. I'm sorry, sir, that's, that's not, not mine. mine. That's your chorus. It's also free legal advice. <laughs> Pro bono. When they didn't find his honesty appealing, so they kicked Kevin in the balls. Pulled the books down from the bookshelf. Pulled the posters off the wall. It was a dark Orwellian rampage to bring tears to the heart of men. And they sat him in the chair and they stared him down and said, we'll ask you once again. And Kevin said, they're not my drugs. I don't use drugs. I don't like drugs. I've never seen drugs. I wouldn't know drugs for more than they bugs. I'm sorry, sir, but that's not mine. Well, when Kevin just wouldn't be helpful, well, the coppers did as they were taught. They took him down to the station and they marched him into court. And behind the bench sat a magistrate with manner grim and words so grand. And he listened to the cops as they told their tale and then Kevin took the stand. And Kevin said, they're not my drugs. I don't use drugs. I don't like drugs. I've never seen drugs. I wouldn't know drugs from Morton Bay bugs. I'm sorry, sir, but that's not mine. Um. Well, a hush fell over the courtroom when the evidence had all been heard and all eyes were fixed on that magistrate as they waited for the word. And the magistrate sat there pondering, well, how would justice be done? And after careful thought and at the proper time, he said to Kevin, stand up, son. And then he said, they're not, not your drugs. drugs. You don't lose drugs. drugs. You don't like drugs. drugs. You've never, never seen, seen drugs. drugs. You, you wouldn't know drugs from Morton Bay bugs. Not guilty, no conviction. No fine. Well, when Kevin left the courtroom, he was grinning from ear to ear. He was thinking about his friends at home and more music, more stash and more gear. And as he left, he met that magistrate who said, my son, you're not alone. If you get caught, you got a drug problem. Come back to my place and have a cone. But remember, they're not your drugs. You don't use drugs. You don't like drugs. You've never seen drugs. You wouldn't know bugs from Morton Bay bugs. Sorry, sir, but that's not mine altogether. They're not my drugs. I don't use drugs. I don't like drugs. I've never seen drugs. I wouldn't know drugs from Morton Bay bugs. I'm sorry, sir, but that's not mine. I'm sorry, sir, but that's not mine. I'm sorry, better luck next time. I thought it was a passion fruit vine. Overseas. Uh, you have to unplug this thing. I was overseas uh, when John perished and um, uh, in Kabul, which is sort of five hours behind Canberra and Brisbane in time. Well, maybe five centuries behind, actually, but. Um, literally five hours behind and uh, mm. so when the um, funeral for John was scheduled in Brisbane on 10.30 in the morning um, I knew it was going to be broadcast on Zoom but I thought to myself I'm going to wake up and tune into this funeral 
Firstly, because John was a dear friend of mine and very generous to me uh, in a way that really for me embodied so much about what the folk scene is about. But the second reason I set my alarm that morning is because John himself would say, if you don't go to people's funerals, you can't expect them to go to yours. <laughs> and uh, anyway, the alarm was set to go off at 5 a.m., but I woke up two hours early with this song in my head. It's called The Sweet Ever After. Woke at dawn, turned it on, watched them burying John. COVID funeral not packed to the rafters. I watched on Zoom from my room in the 5 a.m. gloom. Gone too soon to the sweet ever after. Watched his girl rise to tell how he gave them all hell, how he lusted for justice and laughter. She read from bliss, I will miss how he taketh the piss, indiscreet to the sweet ever after. Master, and then we mend amongst friends. That's what counts in the end. Go complete to the sweet ever after. To the street and the sweet ever after. We're ready to go. Um, so, you know, you've heard all those exciting and depressing songs, uh, but we're going to lighten the mood a bit if we can. Now, this is a sea shanty about Idaho, as uh, there are a lot of sea shanties about Idaho, and John <laughs> wrote it about a true story involving beavers. Uh, and I think that's probably all we need to say because, oh, other than to say that the first idea, if you imagine transporting beavers, you might think to put them in a cage, say a wicker cage, so they would be able to chew their way out in due course. And the problem with that was that they were be being beavers, they chewed their way out way too soon uh, for the purposes of the plot. So um, we'll just get started, make sure I get a good note. 
And you know, that, you know the tune to this one, and so after we've done the first chorus, you will know exactly what to do from then on. If you don't sing, we'll come out and shoot you. <laughs> in 48 in Idaho, for houses the beavers had to go. They called for help from a man named Elmo, fish and game employee. What shall we do with a homeless beaver? What shall we do with a homeless beaver? What shall we do with a homeless beaver? Throw him from an airplane. Beavers, they move way too slow. From Hyatt Lake, they had to go. The leader was called Geronimo. He was fine and brave and furry. What shall we do with a homeless beaver? What shall we do with a homeless beaver? What shall we do with a homeless beaver? Throw him from an airplane. Elmo he too was a man, Elmo had a cunning plan, I will do what no one else can, transplant all the beavers. What shall we do with a homeless beaver, 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 throw him from an airplane. Beavers their demise were facing, they had to get from Chamberlain Basin, against the clock Elmo was racing. We, we must save, save the beavers. beavers. What, what shall we do with a homeless beaver? What shall we do with a homeless beaver? What shall we do with a homeless beaver? Throw him from an airplane. He thought of parachutes, we don't know why, to send the beavers through the sky. A dumb idea, but worth a try. Freedom <laughs> for the beavers. beavers. What shall we do with a homeless beaver? What shall we do with a homeless beaver? What shall we do with a homeless beaver? Throw him from an Airplane. Elmo put them into boxes, boxes with automatic locks, which open when they hit the rocks. Freedom, Freedom for, for the beavers. beavers. What shall we do with a homeless beaver? What shall we do with a homeless beaver? What shall we do with a homeless beaver? Throw him from an airplane. The beavers live there to this day. They tell their tales, they have their say. It is to Elmo that they pray. The sky god of the beavers. What shall we do with a homeless beaver? What shall we do with a homeless beaver? What shall we do with a homeless beaver? Throw him from an airplane. <laughs> Tom made the parachute beaver, from a Chris Mulpey. <laughs> <laughs> and this and particular beaver does have a home. success right, so that was pretty good. <laughs> Chris Mulpey and the Sydney Shanty Crew. 40 degrees south. I promised you three songs written about John, or for John, and this is the third. It comes from the pen of the legendary Eric Bogle, and a video performance of this song was played at John's funeral. You can find this song on Eric's latest album, The Source of Light. And today, we have not only a special prize, but an extra special prize, surprise. If any of you were here last night, anyone here last night? You would have seen Natalie and Brittany, and gosh, didn't they just lift the rafters? Absolutely fabulous. So, as they get themselves together, We'll get these two set up. The um, ultimate aim, I should say, and I said this before, of uh, the song that, uh, that I wrote and recorded and you can find on Bandcamp is to raise money for uh, John's uh, headstone and grave surround. And Nicole is busy working on that at the moment and uh, we're hopeful that we can organise that uh, to happen very soon. You guys ready? So here, performing the Eric Bogle song, Catching the Wave, on vocals, Chris Weil, on piano, Julie Matthews, and Natalie and Brittany Haas. Give them a big hand.
time he said, and let the wave take me. time he said to say goodbye for every living thing on earth must surely die I know It's a song of love, a song of love. Chris Weil, Julie Matthews, Natalie and Brittany Haas. Thank you. John first discovered folk music when he walked into a session at the New Exchange Hotel in Brisbane one Saturday afternoon in 1983. He loved sessions to the very end, and when he lived in Townsville, he loved to join sessions run by John da Don Jami and his wife, Ange Kitzelman. The world being very small, Don and Nicole had gone to school together, and when Nicole moved back to Townsville, she and John met, fell in love, 
and started singing together. Today we have Don Jami and the multi-talented Lachlan Baldwin. There they are. An outstanding representative of the next generation of fine performers and passionate session participants. Gosh, I wish I was as young as Lachlan again. <laughs> They're going to be playing the Alistair Hewlett song, Yuppie Town. This is a song that John loved to sing ever since the old days of a session at Brisbane's Storybridge Hotel until that pub got gentrified. <laughs> You've got to love irony in folk music. Alistair was a dear, dear friend of John and Nicole's and like John, was another soul who left us far too early. And unlike most sessions, they're actually plugging in and getting themselves organised. Um, normally Don Jami can be heard somewhere right across the epic showgrounds and <laughs> but uh, he'll be with you in a minute. Ah, uh -huh. almost. Uh, it's, the, it's the element of surprise. <laughs> These boys are dying up here, they say, and uh, I'm just prattling on, but we'll get them going in a sec. Um, There we go. Yeah. yeah. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> um, do you like my pants? Do you like my pants? Yeah, they're loud and, and annoying. I wore them for John. <laughs> I didn't know if that joke was going to work or not. Um, I met John in 1988, and we quickly became very good mates. And we played a lot of music together, like a real lot of music together. And uh, this is a song that we used to do for it quite regularly. It's written by Alice Hewlett. It's called Yuppie Town. Let's go. Well, the people who live round here they don't have that much Well they make do with the things that others wouldn't even touch The people who live round here they work in the factories And they don't have to choose, they're all by necessity And they better watch out There's a new breed taking over, they're driving us out They've been giving us the old ones over They're gonna turn the place down Turn it into Yuppie Town Turn the place down and turn it into Yuppie Town The people who live round here Remember how it used to be Now you to your neighbour on the street Or stopping for a cup of tea the people who live round here, they like to have a beer and all. Yes. But since the old pub changed hands, you can't get it in overalls. And you better watch out. There's a new breed taking over, they're driving us out. They've been giving us the old once over. They're gonna tear the place down, turn it into your beer town. Tear the place down and turn it into your beer town. push off west it's funny how the powers that be they always seem to know what's best the people who live round here they got the place in such a state the people who live round here drive down the price of real estate and they better watch out there's a new breed taking over they're driving us out they've been giving us the old ones over they're gonna tear the place down Tear the place down and turn it into your B town. Tear the 
the place down and turn it into yuppie town. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Mr. Lachlan Baldwin. Thank you. Mr. John Jarmy. And we miss you, festival. John. Thanks, we miss you, buddy. Thank you. A couple of months ago, Nicole emailed our next performer, telling him about this concert and what a huge influence he'd been on John, especially in the 1980s, given John's commitment to law and social justice. Nicole asked, ever so politely, I'm giving you the abridged version, if our guest could sing one of John's favourite session songs. And our guest, I can tell you, is uh, <laughs> not the man who has the guitar, but the man who's about to hand over the guitar. So I'm delighted to announce that he agreed, and here to sing Between the Wars is Billy Bragg! Thank you very much. I didn't know John, but I was honored to get a request for, from Nicole because, you know, basically we're in the same tradition, John and I. We're basically, we're doing Woody's work. I was a miner. I was a docker, I was a railwayman Between the wars I raised a family In time of austerity We'd sweat at the foundry Between the wars I raised a union And as times got harder I looked to the government to help the working man But they brought prosperity Down at the armory We're arming for peace, me boys Between the wars I kept the faith And I kept voting Not for the iron fist but for the helping hand For theirs is a land With a wall around it And mine is a faith In my fellow man Theirs is a land of hope and glory Mine is the greenfield and the factory floor Theirs are the skies Dark with bombers and mine is the peace we knew between the wars. Call up the craftsmen, bring me the draftsmen, build me a path from cradle to grave, and I'll give my consent to any government that does not deny a man a living wage go find the young men never to fight again bring up the banners from the days gone by sweet moderation parts of this nation deserts us not we are between the walls. John. Thank you, Billy. Thank you. I can tell you that John would be deeply disappointed that he wasn't here to hear that, but maybe somewhere in a parallel universe. John and Nicole first performed publicly as a duo at the insistence of Marie Robertson for the opening set of the first Chris Weil and Julie Matthews concert in Brisbane 
interestingly enough, a concert that, um, that I helped put on. And um, Chris and Julia and I were trying to work out when that was. We think maybe 1999. This next song, which was written early on in the Cloud Street journey, brings together John's spiritual relationship with the natural world and his fascination with history, myth and religion. There are carvings of the green man to be found in churches and cathedrals all over the UK and Europe. And this anthemic song by John has now passed into the folk repertoire and is song at folk, sung at folk clubs and sessions and maybe even in churches across the world. For this final song in tribute to John, please join Nicole, Emma, Rebecca and all their friends and the audience members who have learned the harmonies at Nicole's workshop and we ask you to raise the metaphorical rafters in honour of our dear friend and fellow musical traveller, the wonderful, the inimitable John Thompson. Hello everyone, thank you so much for coming to this and for being here as part of this. Please raise your voices and sing this song with what we in the folk tradition used to call an ugly, which is when everybody gets up and sings. I'm not saying they're ugly though. <laughs> I wouldn't dare, they're behind me. Long live the green 
Blessings on your journey, John. Our thanks to the Butterwang Sound and Stage crew. We've given them lots to do. To the performers, Nicole Murray, Emma Nixon, Rebecca Wright, me, Anne Birmingham, Marie Robertson, Angie Kitzelman, Don Jarmy, Lachlan Baldwin, Fred Smith, Hayden Kinsman, Dave O'Neill, Jackie and Lucy, Mitch Preston, Matt Nightingale, Daniel Townley, Kevin Jones and Bell Swagger, Andy Rigby, Lulu, Tess, Kate Burke, Jason and Chloe Roweth, Helena Bond, Billy Bragg, Chris Wilde, Julie Matthews, Natalie and Brittany Haas, Chris Maltby and the Sydney Shanty Singers and anyone else I've forgotten. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for being here. May John and his music live on in his memory with all of us. Thank you all. And don't go too far because there's more wonderful music to come. What's it? Oh, sorry, there's merch out the back. I can't forget the merch. Don't forget there's merch out the back. Thank you.